65% keyboards are as small as what most people will go. Those dedicated arrow keys are really hard to give up. So today, we'll take a look at the Hades 68 by Durgod. This keyboard was sent to me by HK Gaming and it looks really promising. So let's see what it's all about. This 65 board comes in a nicely designed box. Branding is on point and matches Durgod's usual look. In it, you get the keyboard itself, but you also get a wire keycap spooler and two USB cables. Both are USB Type-C, but on the other hand, one has a regular Type-A connector, while the other is Type-C as well and shorter. That's cool that they include both, given that some laptops nowadays only have Type-C ports. The main perk with this keyboard is the case, I would say. It's entirely made out of anodized aluminum. There's no angle adjustments whatsoever, but it's pretty common with smaller keyboards like these. At the back, you'll get the USB-C port. It's quite recessed, but I like that. It fits a bit more snug. The keyboard has no flex at all, mainly because of that solid case. So overall, the build quality is great. Now, taking a look at the keycaps, this is where we're losing some points. First, the layout, while staying as close as possible to NC, it does have a few non-standard keys. These would be the right shift key, which is one unit shorter to accommodate the up arrow key, and the bottom row at the right has one unit keys instead of 1.25. With that layout, you're also missing the right ALT key, and that's a key that I use a lot, but you can always remap that in software if needed. Replacing these with third-party keycaps will be slightly harder than with a 100% standard NC layout keyboard. However, it will still be feasible with most large keycap sets that will accommodate the slightly different keys. One thing to note is that if you go with profile keycaps, you might have trouble replacing the delete, page up, and down keys, as they normally have different row numbers than what they're located at on this board. One solution would be to go with DSA or XDA keycaps, as an example, or simply use blank keycaps. Although finding new keycaps might be a challenge with this board, you might want to do that as the included ones aren't that great. They're ABS, they're not double shot, and they're not very thick either, so they might wear off quickly. This keyboard comes in a variety of switches, either cherries, gatherons, or kales with three kinds for each brand. So many options to pick from. Cherries are the most expensive, while gatherons are the cheapest. My unit came with kale browns, as I prefer tactile switches, and they deliver. Really nice to type on, and overall great switches. As for the stabilizers, they're not on par with the amazing ones on the K320 or K520, but they're still good and they don't stick. They don't rattle either, but they wobble a tiny bit, but I'll leave you to a sound test to give you an idea. Typing on this keyboard is a really nice experience. The heavy case makes the keyboard feels well built, it doesn't move around and it makes a pleasing sound overall. These scale box browns are super smooth and pair with decent stabs, the whole thing is great to type on. The only thing that I'll have to get used to is maybe the arrow keys location and the smaller modifier keys at the bottom right, but it's really not too bad. I still think it's easier to get used to than 60% keyboards that include dedicated arrow keys. These boards usually have a one unit wide right shift key and it's pretty easy to miss at first. Now, this unit also has RGB LEDs and you get a few controls on board to change the built-in effect, brightness and animation speed, but it's fairly limited. So your best bet will be to use the Durgod Hera compiler software. With it, you can set up more complex LED configurations up to key by key color, and you can also configure two other profiles and activate them after that directly on the keyboard. In fact, there are LEDs on top that shows you which profile they're currently using. I would still be careful with that software as it erases all the keyboard's default key by default with a new project, so it's quite a bummer to reassign everything after that, and it will override existing LED configs as well. It's still under beta as I review this unit, so it might be better in the future. So would I recommend this keyboard? I think this is a great option for dedicated arrow keys on a small keyboard. My highlights are definitely the high quality aluminum case, the switch selection, and the great layout. The RGB LEDs are nice too with vibrant colors and whites are good as well. The stabilizers are also plenty good and will satisfy most people I think, and having a Type-C connector is always appreciated. On the other hand, my main downsides with this keyboard would be the keycaps. They're not terrible, but it would have been nice to see some double shot PBD keycaps especially since Durgod has keyboards that have these, like the K320. At the same time, replacing these keycaps shouldn't be too hard given that it shares the same layout many other 65% boards have, like the Tata 68 or Akko 3068. 
If you have a lower budget, the Akko 3068 would actually be a great option with cherry switches and PVD die sub keycaps. However, you lose the customizability, aluminum case, and LEDs. So that wraps it up for today. Let me know what you think about this keyboard. Should I review other 65% boards or should I stick to 60% and 10 keyless units? As always, I'll have affiliate links down below, so feel free to use them if you want to check this keyboard out and help the channel at the same time. So thank you for watching. Make sure you leave a like if you did, and if you didn't, just let me know why down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.